As opioid overdose related deaths have been on the rise here in Georgia, about 2,500 Georgians lose their lives to a drug overdose every year. When you single out opioid deaths, the National Center for Drug Abuse says that's more than 1,400 people a year. Nearly 37,000 people in Georgia in a rehab every year. Taylor Martin looks at just how big the issue is and what leaders are doing about it. The opioid crisis knows no boundaries. From Georgia to South Carolina, nearly 200 people have died this year from overdoses in Richmond and Aiken counties alone. I lost my son, Austin, back in March, and his name is on this list, unfortunately. In Richmond County, 87 people died from overdose, and in Aiken County, 84. Addiction is just an insidious disease. The Hale Foundation in Richmond County and Recovery Road in Aiken County are the only treatment centers of their kind in the area, with just 16 beds in Aiken and around 60 in Augusta. More improvement, we need more homes. We need more people because right now we're opening up a men's place. We have our grand opening tomorrow and we're already full. Whether inpatient or outpatient, experts are saying the impact isn't made in how the treatment is given but instead, how long? Unfortunately, most people want to go for inpatient help. And inpatient is good, it's the best, it's wonderful, but it is hardly available anymore. But in both counties, there are resources available. I think we kind of lost traction after COVID, but I do think that we're on an uphill stretch to get better. Leaders just think those struggling don't know where to start. Reporting in Augusta, Taylor Martin on your side. And in today's opioid task force meeting, they talked about having recovery advocates on hand at local hospitals to connect with those people who've overdosed with the resources they need. Well, you'd think the drug, the problem would be worse for our young people, but our Will Rio found that data shows just the opposite. Tonight, the I-Team takes a deeper look at the crisis impacting our area. Yeah, according to the Georgia Department of Public Health, fentanyl is Augusta, Richmond County's number one killer of adults ages 30 to 50 years old. The DEA says it's 50 times more potent than heroin and 100 times more potent than morphine. We constantly show you the number of overdoses in our area and tell you that they're only going up, but we often don't get to see the faces behind these statistics. Back in 2022, Alex King would have been 30 years old, and he died of a fentanyl overdose given to him by someone else. Clifton Bates was 24 years old when he got prescriptions from the dentist. He eventually died of a fentanyl overdose. At a rally in Augusta, we learned the names of Andrew Vowell and Peyton Marsh, who both overdosed on fentanyl as well. Now, we had two different children die from fentanyl, including one-year-old Alex Xavier that we covered multiple times. Now, our I-team looked at the growing issue of fentanyl in our area early last year. In April of 2022, more than 1,500 fentanyl pills were seized, according to an incident report. Now, later that year in May, more than 5,000 fentanyl pills were found. In August, 81 grams of press pills and another 107 grams of meth mixed with fentanyl were also seized. Deputies say they found more than 1,100 fentanyl pills in October at one Augusta home. So much being found in our area. Now this year alone, Grovetown police made a big fentanyl bus finding four pounds of fentanyl pills. And back in October, you may remember Augusta had one of its largest fentanyl drug bust ever when investigators seized 15 pounds of fentanyl, enough to kill 3.5 million people. So what's being done to cut down on this epidemic in August or in August of this year, South Carolina signed the fentanyl trafficking bill into law. We're still waiting to see that drug induced homicide bill when it will be passed, when we could see that happen, when lawmakers return back to legislature in January. Now in Georgia, Wesley's law is for offenses involving drug induced homicide as well. That's in its second reading in the House. Well, thanks for that. Funding is on the way to help fight this issue. Over the next 18 years, hundreds of millions of dollars will be used to create resources for impacted communities. But how and when will that money be used here in Richmond County? Liz Owens following the paper trail for us tonight. Thanks, Richard. Well, let's first talk about where the money is coming from. A class action lawsuit against several big pharma companies resulted in a $517 million settlement to Georgia. The Johnson & Johnson lawsuit settled with the state for $118 million. The two come after a 2021 settlement with McKinsey and Company for $13 million. Lots of money, but here's how it breaks down. With the last two settlements, 75% of it, 
that money goes to the state. The rest is split between 11 regions in Georgia. The amount we get locally is based off of a, of a formula. The formula calculates the number of people who've died from opioids in our area. It also calculated, also calculated are the number of shipments for drugs used to treat opioid addiction and reversing overdoses. Part of the requirement for local governments to get the money is to create a board that oversees how that money is spent. The county also has to show it has the infrastructure or resources to treat opioid addiction. Now, according to the nonprofit KFF Health News, Augusta Richmond County has already received more than $800,000 in settlement money over the last two year, years. I checked the city's revenue report and they show they, they have received most of that $800,000 plus dollars last year. The budget also shows about $200,000 of that money was allotted to the solicitor's office. 150,000 to drug court, but we did not find where the rest is listed in the budget. Our local Department of Health has a representative on the opioid board. They tell us the board has not yet received money from the city. I asked the administrator's office about a timeline when the money would go to the board in charge of overseeing how that money spent. We are still waiting to hear back.